OK YouTubers, this is Joe from Worth Onion TV, another game of interplanetary ice by Golden here, back on Mars, back to Gale Crater, and we have an image here on the JPL uh, website here, the JPL website, that has been doing the rounds the last couple of days, and I thought I'd uh, have a closer look and compare it to some other images that have, I've published over the last few years uh, to see if it matches up or anything like that. Now, this image was first posted, I think, on uh, Alien Life Space Moon Earth Anomalies uh, page or group on Facebook by Neville Thompson. Really cool image. Just here, looks like a tree stump sticking up out of the ground. Very cool. Um, other channels are, I think, publishing the image saying it's a tree. May well be. There is a lot of petrified wood in Gale Crater. And I'll be the first to admit that there I have published quite a number of images in some of my videos of what very much looks like petrified wood. It may not be, of course, but it does look like it. Um, so I'm going I'm to quickly show you some of that here in a second. And there's various things that look like tree stumps and uh, even possible organic growth like this possible mushroom or whatever that may be. There's lots of weird things that look like plants and uh, things like that. And what I'll do is I'll put a few clips in at the end for you to have a close-up look. But there's also a couple of articles I wanted to touch on as well. Um, Rover data creates paradox about water on Mars. Now, this is interesting. I'm not going to read it all out to you now. I'll, I'll have links below. You can, you can check these articles out yourself. And... Uh, now, of course, if, if there are trees on Mars, then there has to be water. Now, of course, there is ice on Mars, lots of it. And are we really supposed to believe that none of this ice ever melts on Mars, even though it, it gets up to 80 degrees in, uh, in the daytime in the warmer parts of Mars, on the warmer parts of Mars? Um, and at certain times of year, of course, uh, the, the ice will melt, creating areas of meltwater and I've done quite a lot of videos on this and I've got some images up here to show you as well but first we'll have a look at this this is the one that Neville T posted a couple of days ago in fact yesterday and uh, a, number, a number of channels have already done videos on this it does look like a tree stump um, I haven't gone right into this and looked it up close I've got the image up here this is the black and white version they haven't on the official site they haven't posted the color version yet for some reason but I'm not sure about this, because if you look at it in context, you have this very straight looking piece of material sticking up here, which is probably only about a foot or two high, you know, it may even be less. Um, hard to say exactly. Uh, it could be three foot. And then you have this other rock here sticking up parallel to it in line with it. Now, I wonder whether this was actually joined to this and it's just kind of broken away here and collapsed, leaving this piece sticking up on the end. Possibly, couldn't ever know for sure because, of course, the rover never really looks at these interesting things properly and leaves us all to speculate with very low quality images to look at, which are hard to decide either way a lot of the time unless they're really up close. Um, so, uh, it could be, could be. Not too sure about this one. Uh, no disrespect to Neville T. Neville T does an amazing amount of work for us researchers, and his gigapans are awesome. And he, uh, he, he must spend hours and hours and hours working on these things every day, putting them together for us to look at and, and search through. So he makes all our lives a lot easier and quicker when it comes to finding interesting things on Mars. So do check him out on his page, Alien Life Space Moon Earth Anomalies. Um, really cool. I go on there quite a lot. There's always interesting posts on it on there, and uh, he's got some great stuff that he puts up. Uh, the Gigapans, of course, are awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to show you some of the things I've published recently in the last year or two. I'm not going to show you everything. Now these are all in a in a playlist called uh, what's it called? Mars Trees and Plants Organics or Italian TV. So if you want to look at these in greater depth, um, you can you can go to this playlist on my page, and of course, links to all these images will be under each video description, in the description, okay? Down here. Usually, sort of about halfway down. There's the image links for this one. 
before the big bit of text at the end. So they should all be highlighted so you, so you can find them all. Right, okay. Well, there's this one. Now, this is a place called Angustus Labyrinthus or Angus Maze or, or Labyrinth, Angus. Um, very interesting. I, pu I published this a while back. Now, <clears throat> this is also this area is also known as the Inca City, funny enough, and that was a name given it, given by NASA to the area, to, to kind of describe the patterns that you can see from from hundreds of miles up uh, above the surface via satellite, and you have these kind of what look like kind of kind of symmetrical shapes here in the ground, and this I think is snow or ice. But you have these black marks everywhere. Now, are they really black? Of course, many of the images we have of Mars are black and white. And you wouldn't know if these were trees or not because there's no colour in the image. And of course, trees are usually green or browny green or bright green. Um, so the, this may well be organics and um, organic growth here. And what may be happening in these trough-like areas. Now, it, to me, in this video, you really need to see this one. Uh, Mars desert plants and artificial structures, they do look like plants. And these areas look like a kind of salt lake or a dried out uh, crater bed that's cracked, but may have some intelligent design here. Some of them are very straight. I'll let that play through a little bit and you'll see what I mean. Um, basically, what it looks like is that moisture is collecting on these higher parts here and then melting. In, during the day into these lower parts where what the like organic grow, growth is growing before the moisture then freezes again at night. So this may be what is happening in certain areas of Mars, certainly near the uh, uh, the, the South Pole um, in the melt zone. Now you can see it more clearly from here. You've got all these rather interesting shapes. I'm not saying these are man-made, but um, some of them may be, who knows? Some of them do look very symmetrical, but it just may be where the edge of the crater is fragmented in a certain way. But I found this very interesting. And uh, some good quality images in here, really good high quality images from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, Orbiter MRO. And uh, they're pretty clear. Um, and these are growing in lines and patterns, which kind of looks like moss or plants of some sort. Okay, you've got rows of them here, you've got lots of patches of them and they seem to be growing in the lower parts of these uh, areas. See these long lines here? Now bushes tend to grow in patterns like that. Uh, these may not be trees or bushes, they may be some other kind of organic growth like fungi, very large patches of fungi that grow in the ice or lichen. Uh, there are types of lichen that grow on icy and snowy ground in, in places like Norway and in the, in the North Pole on Earth. So it wouldn't surprise me if there was stuff like this on Mars. I don't see why not. So that was a cool image. So do take a look at that. That's a good, uh, a good set of images to look through there on that video. And that was uh, published uh, when uh, July last year. Okay. There was also this one, which is much more recent, I think. This is, uh, is it this year? Uh, towards the end of last year, November. And we have here what looks like a piece of petrified wood. Uh, now there's lots of this stuff in Gale Crater, okay? But nobody cares. <laughs> because I've been publishing pictures of petrified wood in Gale Crater on, uh, on Mars for years now, uh, three or four years now. And most of the videos with wood or, or trees or whatever in the title don't get any views at all. Very strange, don't know why that is. People just don't care. And of course it's proof of previous life on Mars. I mean. Uh, plants are life, they are life forms, so let's sh show some of that and look at the details. Petrified Wood Mars Enhanced Clip. Now this video is called Mars Building Wheel and Tree, okay? And here's some petrified wood on Earth and it is almost identical when you look at the, the actual structure and um, the actual, the way it's cracked into sort of segments here, which are almost equally spaced along here, see? You've got a piece there, a piece there, and a piece there, okay? Let's play that through. And you, you have the, the grain of the wood going through the 
the trunk and uh, it should actually let's go back a bit and play that again because you've got to watch the sequence carefully look at the way these are broken in a very similar fashion let's do that again just to make it short see that there's cracks here cracks here cracks here and the grain of the wood which is now petrified is kind of breaking away okay where it's been weathered and frozen and then warmed up countless times parts of it then fragment and break off okay and there you have it very very close match if you ask me uh, I'm, I'm fairly convinced that it is petrified wood so what we are seeing in that image that I showed you before may well be petrified wood a whole lot may, may be whole layers of it you know um, now this was a great image anyway from Earth I mean look at these up here really cool and we do see similar things on Mars at Mount Sharp some of these are, these are ventifacts left by erosion where parts of the rock are broken away and kind of look intelligent so many of the things we are looking at on Mars may not be what quite what we th they th we think they uh, may be a lot of them may well be but a lot of them probably aren't so we also have this here, uh, now this was called Mars Vine Plant and Coffin Corpse. Now, we're ignoring the corpse-like thing for now, and we're just going to look at this little thing, because this is... I've, I've come back to this a couple of times now, and I still don't know what this is. Now, this is very small. This is probably only a matter of inches high, this thing. And I, I initially published this a couple of years ago, I think. This is a republish of it that I put up recently. This was from a couple of years ago. And we have this very odd look looking thing here, which is quite vague. The, the quality of the image is poor, so it's hard to say. Um, but we have what looks like part of some petrified wood here, like a log, and we have something kind of growing out of it or up it. Now, it looks a bit like a little robot or a person with a head there. I'm not saying that's what it is. It just kind of looks like it's got a head. This almost looks like a technical object, like um, so, some wire object or metallic object that has growth growing up it. Here's the enhancement. Is this a vine plant growing up this strange mechanical looking structure? Now it may not be a mechanical structure, it just has mechan a technical look and lots of parts like this part going across here and here. And it looks like if you look down here, there's some kind of weird kind of structure like a, a vine that comes along the ground and then crawls up round here and then it comes up through here and it kind of twists and kind of looks like it's growing over this piece here like a bar type, uh, type structure here and then coming up here and there's some greenery in here as well a little bit of green is that plant growth is it some kind of vine growth it's very very odd and I, I still to this day have absolutely no idea what this is it's a very difficult image to get your head around and even when you, you zoom back a bit and, and uh, stand back it doesn't make a lot of visual sense um, so it's very difficult to work out there's another enhancement there much brighter now you can see there's almost like a spine like structure coming up here and there's an, uh, almost a, a wheel like structure here part of a I have no idea what this is it could be just a piece of junk or, or who knows. Um, but it looks like there's organics growing up it here. I didn't add these greens in. These were in the image when I enhanced it. I just put, pumped up the uh, contrast and brightness and uh, cleaned it up a bit. And uh, the greens just popped out. So who knows? That could be a plant growing up some very odd structure. And the vines seem to go up here and then along here as well. You can just about make out that they join and carry on along the ground here okay very odd indeed that still don't know what it is um, but may well be who, who knows uh, there's also this video which was uh, one I did not that long ago um, late last year December Martian mushroom uh, is the rover terraforming Mars and this shows what look like very odd structures coming out of the dried lake bed here now, they might, may not be living at all, but this may have been some underwater living organism at some point, like some kind of underwater plant or coral or something similar. Who knows? Uh, and there are a number of these in this area, and some of them look really interesting. 
Some of them actually look like buried ar artefacts that have solidified in the mud and hardened when the water dried out and may well be things that were dropped in the water or left there after the cataclysm on Mars. Uh, but this one kind of looked organic to me and it looks like part of it's broken off here, kind of like a mushroom with a neck there, like a stem perhaps. Of course, this could be thousands of years old. Uh, there could be types of plants on Mars that can grow in extremely harsh conditions. We really don't know. They don't need oxygen, so uh, it's possible. And it may also be the case that the, the actual rover, as I suggest in this video, may actually be spreading spores from dormant uh, fungi that could have been dormant for thousands and thousands of years. There may be little spores under the just below the sand in some of these areas that may not have been disturbed for for many thousands of years and and there, there does seem to be according to some people fungi growing on the actual rover itself because it does collect moisture there's also what looks like something very interesting here which i didn't mention in this video just here like a dead jellyfish or some kind of weird dead creature that's kind of squashed with limbs, one, two, three, who knows? Very odd, uh, I don't know if that gets any clearer. Let's play that through a little bit. There's, there's lots of weird stuff in this one. This is a really interesting one. And uh, I do wonder whether some of these things, are, a lot of them are just ventifacts and just eroded. But some of them are really interesting. And the, the wind can do crazy stuff. Um, I'm not suggesting that all these things are plants or, or, or trees or whatever. Um, but this image did give me the idea that the rover may be disturbing some of these little things, which may be giving off spores, and the spores could possibly collect on the wheels uh, and then be spread along as the rover moves around. Okay? There's lots of weird stuff in this video. Uh, interesting, weird stuff. Let's let it play through just a little bit more before we move on to the next one. I won't spend too long on each one because you can go and watch these properly if you like, and uh, see them in more detail, if you wish. There was also this one, and uh, this may well just be a dried structure, but, but how the hell does this actually even stay attached to this here? Now, this is extremely thin. I estimate this part, this neck part here, where you've got this blob on the end, which seems to have an eye in it, which for some amazing reason, these, all, these things always seem to have eyes. Uh, <laughs> it's got like a black eye there. Um, that part where it's joined, this bit's joined to there, is approximately a millimetre in thickness or diameter, okay? So whatever this is, it's a strong material and it's eroded away and this kind of blob-shaped thing is on the end of it. Now, also, pay attention to this thing underneath. It seems to have two canine teeth, which may be a skull, may not be, but it, it could be. I've found many, many skulls on Mars. And here's a close-up. What is this under the Ventifax structure, just here? There's two teeth sticking down. So that may be a skull leaning back, and we're just seeing teeth sticking down here, but it's kind of hidden. Who knows? You never really know. Uh, and one thing I would like to remind some of the more sceptical of you out there is that NASA have never denied that there is, is or was life on Mars. What they do is a, a tactical uh, manoeuvre that politicians use. It's called strategic vagueness. Now, strategic vagueness is a, is a way of putting people off a subject that they don't want you really to, to get involved in. Uh, this is another weird structure. I don't know what that is either, and that's also incredibly thin. Uh, if you look at the shadow, you can see how thin it goes there. Very odd indeed. It's like a little wheel on it there. Very odd. But yeah, strategic vagueness is something that, that NASA use a lot. And I really do think they've got their hands tied. And they want to tell us there was life on Mars. Uh, and I think they've been wanting to tell us this since probably 2007, when uh, the crinoid fossil was found by the Opportunity rover, which was then destroyed deliberately by the rover and at the hands of one of the people at NASA to destroy the evidence. They drilled through it with the rock abrasion tool. So if you want to look that up, 
uh, you know, look up Rock of Ragentool and Fossil destroyed by NASA, and you, you, you will find uh, a few articles on that on the, on the internet. So check that out. Um, I do think they're being strategically vague and trying secretly or, or not, uh, nodding and winking at us that there is something there, but I don't think they're allowed to tell us. Um, there's also this thing here uh, that I published this years ago. This has done really well. Uh, over 200,000 views, this one. This looks like a, a tree stump, a part of a tree stump here, foss uh, fossilised, petrified wood, with a statue underneath it. <laughs> May not be, of course, but there's a foot here with toes on it. Uh, now, this doesn't seem to want to play in full HD for some reason, or, or HD. I'll play a tiny bit of it anyway. Um, because my browser only supports a certain number of videos at a time. It's not a great browser. Okay, there we are. There's the uh, enhancement. So, yeah, it looks like a foot there with toes and possibly fossilised tree sun. A section of petrified wood. Who knows? So, yeah, there are lots of these things on my channel. So do check out that playlist if you're interested in this thing. Uh, where is the playlist? Is it here? Yes, here we go. Mars trees and plants. Okay. Check that out when you have time. Uh... The articles I was going to touch on, High Probability of Life on Mars, a brief review of the evidence. Now this is relevant to what we're looking at and this is a really good article and it's written by uh, Regina Sharmila Das, who is a professor of microbiology from India and this is a very interesting thing. Now this is the rover showing some what may be some fungal growth. Comparative photos here. There's another one here. I won't go through all this in detail now. You can look at this yourself. There's also these interesting structures on the surface. Patterns, I should say. Uh, some of this is on the space station. It seems that certain types of fungi can grow in zero gravity and possibly in a vacuum. Uh, how that works exactly, I don't know. Fungi and microbial damage on uh, in the space station, not on it. Okay, that's inside, so that makes more sense. But there are some interesting pictures here. Uh, Martian fungi growing on the ground with white spores littering the Martian surface. A majority of biologists, biologists report that these are Martian specimens. These Martian specimens are living organisms, and are similar to puffballs. Okay. And there's lots of in, uh, data to back this up as well. And, and this, I think, was published a while ago, um, a, couple, a, a couple of years ago, I think. And uh, here's real close-ups here. Okay. Mushroom mushrooms are puffballs. And we have seen a lot of balls on Mars, ball-shaped things. Some of them may well be organic. Uh, I don't think a lot of them are. I think some of them are actually mechanical or parts of ammunition or spent ammunition that kind of thing but uh, I, I'm not going to disagree with this person this person has obviously done a lot of research and knows what they're talking about and and uh, this was very interesting and and it does go somewhere towards what I'm saying here is that yeah we just because you see something sticking up out of the ground doesn't mean there's a tree but it might be it might be a, a petrified piece of wood from many many thousands of years ago <clears throat> I couldn't tell you exactly when these uh, areas were for the water. I don't even think NASA knows. They do have theories, of course, but they're based on a bit of uh, evidence they've gathered over the last, mainly over the last few years of Gale Crater. There's also the, the Rover Data Creates Paradox About Water on Mars article here from unionbulletin.com. This was interesting because... Uh, let's get rid of that a minute, sorry. Um... I won't read all this now, because, but you should. It's interesting. I've just highlighted some of the text here. Yes, yes, yet today there is no li liquid water on the surface of Mars. The surface is too cold. All the water we have found, all which have water we have found, there is in the form of ice. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, okay. Now, is this just another, yet another article to try and make people believe there's nothing but ice water on Mars. 
because there these come out all the time. I get a, a whole bunch of these every day. I'm setting my Google alerts to get articles like this every day to, to keep up to date on everything. And uh, it's well worth reading this. Um, every story you get, every day there's a story where NASA is saying, oh, there might be life on Enceladus and there might be life on Europa, possibly on Titan, they're now saying. Um, they, they always want to distract us away from Mars, uh, as if to say, oh, we don't really want you to look at Mars, we want you to look over here. And we don't really have any close ups, so we're just kind of pontificating, we don't really know anything. Um, they love to distract us from what's actually going on. And most of these articles always have a kind of sentence very similar to this, that uh, all the water on Mars is frozen. Well, I say that it is, it is not all frozen. And it's sometime, a part, parts of the year when, uh, when it's hotter, the water is unfrozen. And I've got a picture of it here. Some of you may have seen this already. Uh, this one here. Not only do we have moving rocks and big wet patches on the surface like this, huge wet patch. So, I mean, if all the water was frozen, how did that get there? You know, it must be defrosting and then refreezing regularly and pushing these rocks along, okay? Now, the way this works on Earth is you, you have rocks on a kind of muddy surface, fairly flat, and water forms on the surface, which then freezes, and then when the wind blows the next day, uh, the ice then slides, a big part, kind of miniature icebergs, kind of float along the surface on the liquid water, and then push the rocks along and bump them along from day to day, and uh, they kind of nudge it one kind of measure at a time, like you can see here, you can see these marks. So that's probably ice that's kind of bumped that along. That's, what's, that's what causes it on Earth, so why not on Mars? Um, that was an interesting one. But you have this image, which is, I, I think is a, a very, very cool image, uh, PIA14462. Look this one up, if not, there'll be a link below. Um, obviously a water lake here. Now, unless there is some kind of <laughs> Martian sand that is bright blue and, and see-through, and you can actually see through this, you can see below it. This is transparent, and that's water, liquid water. So at certain times of the year, there is liquid water, so there will, there will be organic material in these areas. Of course, they didn't land the rover by one of these lakes, uh, or did they? You know, there may be other rovers on Mars we don't know about, and also it's very easy for them just not to show images of, of, of water if they choose not to. Um, they probably got loads and loads of uh, samples already and uh, we're just not hearing about it. Okay, so that was that one really. And there are there are lots of images here of, this is a, a, um, a lake area on Mars. Marta Vallis region. I can't see how that's sand, <laughs> you know. It doesn't look like sand, does it? Yeah, right. Okay. There was also this really cool image, which I published a while back, which looks like a waterfall. This is ice up here, this white white area. NASA's explanation for this was that it's a dust fall dislodged by ice up here. Now, what may have happened here is some of the, the ice may have melted, water has dripped down and disturbed a whole bunch of sand and dust as well, which has then tumbled down the side of this ridge mountain here and into this area but it does look suspiciously like water especially over here I mean down here kind of running down who knows hard to say but it's very interesting and it does seem that some of it is kind of running along here as well maybe that's water it could well be a mixture um, really cool image that one of my favorites so there is lots of evidence of it, and there's hydration maps here showing where all the water is distributed on the Mars surface. And you have uh, most of it at the poles. The, the area where the, the, the rover is, I think, is, is sort of around here, and is, is very, very dry and barren, but also very warm. So there would still be frost at night uh, collecting on the rocks in this area, because it does get down to about minus 150 or 180 even. 
uh, depending on what time of year it is. So ice would form and would melt the next day. And that's what we're seeing. And we have seen it countless times in Gale Crater, especially uh, where we have seen melt water coming down the side of, or just below rock ridges in the sand. You have wet patches of sand, much like you see here. Uh, you've got plenty of evidence for it. Um, there's another so-called dust fall here. That's cool. That's so cool. Ice at the top. Is this water coming down here? Melt water? Disturbing a load of dust here? Could well be. And we have this image, which is also one of my absolute favourite images, showing what is a shallow hot water spring lake here with steam rising from it over here, coming up. This is taken by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter at an oblique angle, which means it's not taking, looking straight down on the surface, it's looking across the surface and gives us a unique view of the, of the uh, surface of Mars, showing that there, there is either a liquid water or, or, or at least momentarily, this may just be wet, very wet sand here, and you can just about make out that there is a kind of reflection here of this overhang down here. It, it shows up better when you enhance it, enhance the contrast. But also you have this huge obelisk up here, which is hundreds and hundreds of feet tall here. Absolutely incredible image. And there's even like a little pyramid hidden in there as well, like a triangular thing. Loads of weird stuff in here. And there's kind of salt deposits over here. May well be chalk. As I've said before, this may well be chalk deposits. If it is, then it was made by billions and billions of dead sea creatures. And when the, the water evaporated, it left it behind and left these layers. Um, so that may well be, may well be calcium carbonate. Proof of previous life on Mars. So thanks for watching everybody. I'll put links in for most of these images. Some of them I might have to dig up, so do bear with me. This one particularly is very hard to find and is not on any of the normal places you would find a Mars image. This one's been hidden away in the archives and uh, is extremely difficult to get hold of. Um, so there we go. Absolutely stunning image. If only they were all this good. Absolutely amazing. There's even what look like kind of little buildings and stuff down here. Uh, perhaps some of these structures look pretty cool. But there we go. Are there trees on Mars? Probably. Uh, let's go back to the, that a minute, that first image we looked at. I'm not sure this is one, but there are many, many examples of petrified wood in the, in the Gale Crater. And this is my favourite one recently, anyway. This one here. Because the structure is just there, the detail is just there. And I do wonder whether uh, this is why we get such low quality images from the rover. They deliberately give us kind of really low quality browse images, and they're, they're really quite bad and these fine details very rarely show up unless they're right up in front of the, the rover right close to it and what happens is that the, the, the resolution of the camera t tends to get confused with these long straight lines and then kind of blurs them together and makes them look more fuzzy and weird um, and you don't see any real detail and I'm sure there's a reason for that um, some of these are really weird this one here looks like a bone a bone sticking out here, like a, uh, this looks like a ball joint, perhaps, who knows. Very odd indeed, but, you know, uh, as I always say, it, an open mind is required when looking at images from Mars, because one day our very survival may depend on it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.